the YouTube algorithm. There's been a lot of talk about the YouTube algorithm in the last couple weeks, mostly for bad reasons. From creators being harassed by other creators, to people being directed to extremist and alt-right videos when they started with something benign, to home videos of people's kids racking up hundreds of thousands of views from strangers. Specifically, the algorithm's at the center of a controversy about how YouTube recommends content to people, and whether they're recommending the wrong kinds of content. This video isn't going to focus as much on the specific incidents of the past couple weeks. If you're interested in learning more about that, I've included some links in the description. It's also not going to focus on every version of the algorithm that's ever existed, because YouTube updates this algorithm constantly, so we'd be here forever. Instead, we're going to focus on the algorithm broadly, how it's changed since YouTube was created, and how those changes have affected your viewership experience, because you are on YouTube currently. YouTube went live on December 15th, 2005, and initially there wasn't an algorithm. Instead, people could upload videos about whatever they wanted. Users discovered video through direct links, by searching the content that they were interested in, or by clicking on something on the homepage. Views were the measure of success, so the things on the homepage were the things that had had the most views recently. Similarly, creators were compensated based on views. Now, this was nice for users, but from a business perspective, it wasn't particularly profitable. YouTube makes money because we spend time on it and therefore are shown more ads, which means that more advertisers are interested in marketing their content to viewers. If someone only watches one video, YouTube doesn't make as much money as if someone watches 100 videos. And thus began YouTube's journey to transition from being a video hosting platform, something like Flickr, to a place where we spent a lot of time. They did this in a couple ways, one of them being the YouTube algorithm. Interestingly, they didn't necessarily start with AI, but with expanded metrics. As I mentioned earlier, views were the currency of the original platform, but they quickly realized that views didn't necessarily say anything about whether someone liked a video or how much they engaged with it. If a million people watch three seconds of a 45 minute long video, it has a million views, but no one really watched it and no one really liked it. It probably had a clickbait headline. With the original metrics of views as success, this video still would have ended up on the front page. To combat this, YouTube started looking at a wider array of metrics that might better determine whether or not someone liked a video. This includes watch time, click-through rate, likes versus dislikes, and more. There were some issues with this approach. Initially, it favored longer videos because if you watched a whole 45-minute video, that was more watch time than if you watched a three-minute video. This wasn't necessarily a bad thing, because the idea was that shorter videos are likely low effort content, and so promoting longer videos would promote higher effort content. But at the same time, not all short videos are low quality, and not all long videos are high quality. It's somewhat debatable whether this preference for long videos still remains on the algorithm. We see people posting more long videos on YouTube than they have in the past, but part of that might have been the shift towards posting long videos that the algorithm changes initially initiated, and it's just something that's stayed with the platform even after those changes have been suppressed. So these metrics were then integrated into a deep neural network, and Google AI actually published a paper on this in 2015, although it's reasonable to assume that this model had been in use for years before that. The paper isn't particularly detailed, you could not recreate the YouTube algorithm off of this, but it does outline how the model works. This neural network has two parts. First, it looks through all of the videos on YouTube and picks a couple hundred that it thinks that you, as the viewer, would be more likely to enjoy. Here, your past viewing history, whether or not you liked a video, your watch time for a certain genre, and more are factored in to culling this list of 100 videos. And this first part of the model is called the Deep Candidate Generation Model, because it's generating candidate videos that you might like. The second part of the model is a Deep Ranking Model. This model then ranks those 100 videos that it originally chose based on how much you're likely to enjoy it, and those top-ranked videos are what's shown to you in the sidebar. Now, this model increased watch time drastically on the platform, resulting in increased profits for YouTube and people spending more time watching certain videos. However, many claim that it also siloed people's interests, and looking at neural networks, that does make sense. If you liked watching videos about video games, you were more likely to be recommended more videos about video games. 
If you liked watching videos about cooking, you are more likely to be recommended cooking videos. But if you liked videos about cooking and video games, the Deep Neural Network would basically pick whichever one you liked more and show you that, pushing you further into that category. This means that while you are spending more time on YouTube, you're still not spending as much time as you could be. After all, after a certain point, you are going to get tired of video games or cooking videos, and you'll leave the platform and go do something else. The second major iteration on the YouTube algorithm aimed to change this, and this is the version that they reportedly use today. Reinforce is the model that YouTube is currently running for recommendations. Instead of being a deep neural network, it uses a type of model called deep reinforcement learning. The major difference between Reinforce and the previous model is that Reinforce aims to keep you on the platform for the long term. The original model is concerned about what video you want to watch next, which is why it's so heavily based on what you've watched in the past. As I said, if you watch more video games, you get more video game content. But it doesn't look towards the future. It doesn't think about how your interests might change and whether you might be interested in content in other genres. In other words, Reinforce takes into account that you like both cooking videos and video game videos and will recommend you a mix of both. Or maybe there's a cooking video game, so it'll recommend that. It'll also take into account what users who watch similar videos to you like that may seem to be outside of your interests and recommend that content. Because if you guys have similar viewing profiles, then it's fairly likely that you'd also enjoy other content that they enjoy even if it isn't cooking in video games. In summary, it aims to keep you on the platform for as long as possible, both in the moment when you're here watching a video, but also by drawing you back in to come back to the website after you've watched it for some amount of time. This model was incredibly successful. The New York Times reported that it increased site-wide views by about 1%, which translates to millions of dollars per year in advertising revenue. That metric was from a Google Brain researcher who presented that at a conference, although Google followed up to say that that wasn't necessarily true. However, it's also contributed to some of the issues that we see today. When recommending content that's outside of the genre that you may seem to be interested in, Reinforce sometimes recommends content that is more extreme than you may have been looking for. For example, if you watch Joe Rogan videos, Reinforce is known to then recommend that you watch Alex Jones videos, which may be a little bit further to the right than you had planned on going. If you're interested in learning more about this, I recommend this New York Times article, which is also linked in the description. So that's the YouTube algorithm as it stands today. It's come a very long way since 2005, and I'd expect to see more changes as YouTube aims to continue to keep us on the platform for longer and deal with some of the negative side effects that the current recommendation system has. YouTube has also been trying to update and clarify their content policies, so I would expect to see that affect the types of videos that are recommended based on what YouTube thinks is appropriate for you. Personally, I recommend that you keep watching my videos. If you like this video and you would like to see more videos like this, you can let me know by smashing that like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also support me on Patreon. Thank you so much to all of my current patrons if you'd like to get sneak peeks of what's coming up for this week, as well as behind the scenes footage from whatever I happen to be doing. Otherwise, you can find me on the social medias. I actually just started a new Twitter account that showcases people in artificial intelligence and the work that they do. Uh, it's called at humans of ML. So if you're interested in that, definitely give it a follow. And otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.